What's going on, everybody? Terrell Friday here with Future DDS. And on today's installment of the DSC series, we have Caleb Murray from Louisiana State University School of Dentistry joining us. How you doing, Caleb? Good, man. How you doing? I am doing well, you know, making it, <laughs> making the best that I can. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, man. I just want to say thank you for taking some time out and speaking with us, man. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. I appreciate you guys reaching out. No problem. Definitely, definitely. So if you could, man, just get a, give everybody out there watching a brief reintroduction to, you know, yourself, your journey into dentistry, um, what year you are in school, where you're from originally, and uh, where you went to undergrad. Cool. Yeah, so I'm, a, I'm from Metairie, Louisiana, so it's like five, ten minutes right outside New Orleans. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I kind of knew I wanted to go into dental school in uh, high school, actually. And so I went to University of Louisiana Lafayette, ULL, and uh, did my undergrad in biology. And then from there, you know, kind of applied to different schools, um, ultimately ended up at uh, LSU just for, uh, you know, tuition reasons in state. Yep. It kind of just made a whole lot of sense to me at the time. Um, but yeah. Okay. And you say you're a second year now, right? Yeah. I'm a second year. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. Um, so did you go directly from undergrad into dental school or did you take any time off in between? No. So actually I had a gap year in between, okay. uh, after undergrad and before dental school unintentionally, but you know, um, did a couple, uh, you know, volunteer opportunities and mm -hmm. just to kind of, you know, sharpen up my, um, uh, resume a little bit or I should say my application. Gotcha. But other than that, just kind of did some odd jobs and, you know, got ready to start back up the following year. There we go. There we go. Definitely. So, uh, you know, we see it worked out. That's, that's always, you know, stuck to the plan. That's all. That's all it is. <laughs> uh, so definitely um, one question I know you had definitely when you were pre -dent, I had when I was a pre -dent, and I'm sure a lot of viewers out there have is, is how to do well on the pre on the DAT. So how I guess what would be your number one tip for anyone out there uh, preparing for the DAT right now? Yeah, so I think, so the first time I did it, um, I kind of just did random resources and, you know, it didn't, you know, I didn't do terribly, but it didn't work out. The second time I did DAT boot camp and like, I think that's a staple now. And like just talking to like my classmates and other people that I've met, you know, at different conferences and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people did uh, boot camp and it worked out well. Got Something you. that I did though was for every like question that I would get wrong, whether it be on like, you know, a practice test or, um, you know, just, just anything, any, any, oh, that's another one, taking a lot of like practice tests, that's huge. But anything I got wrong, I would make a note card for it and I'd put that off to the side and then I would study those note cards so that I knew that, you know, everything that I was getting, you know, wrong, I would eventually get it right if I, you know, spent some time with it and whatnot. I mean, honestly, I mean, that stack got pretty thick at one point, but, you know, it, uh, it, it definitely, it definitely paid off. For sure. Okay. Okay. Definitely. So, definitely a systematic approach and you said that you said you took it twice and the second time you used the boot camp but the first time you were just like going at it with your own your own like schedule yeah, man, I, was too, I was too confident that first time but uh <laughs> you know, like, that uh that second time using boot camp like that that really got the job done okay got you got you so for lsu you know that was uh like you said it's right down the street for you so are there any type of um pre-dental like feeder programs or enrichment events that you guys have at at the school for, for prospective students yeah so they actually have uh quite a few actually um like they have one called dash into dentistry okay. and that is for um like rural uh high school students in rural areas in louisiana um to try to like get uh pique their interest in dentistry and they kind of come spend a day at the school and we take them through the labs and like show them basically a day in the life and uh and just get them like uh, interested in dentistry and, and why it's a good career choice, et cetera, et cetera. And they have a few other ones, like uh, one of them is called Impressions Day, and I think that's geared towards more of, um, I mean, high school students also, but uh, college student, undergrad students who, right. are, who know they're interested and they're just coming to like, you know, see what the school is about and everything. Mm -hmm. And then every year in January or February, I believe, the, the, the undergrad, so LSU main campus in Baton Rouge, their pre-dental society puts on like a pre-dent 101 conference at the mm -hmm. school. And so they kind of run like this whole big meeting and it, it gives people who are, you know, in that application year or like a year or two out mm -hmm. to come and like talk to the Dean of Admissions, for example, and, and just come talk to students who are there and faculty and just kind of getting like real, um, like one-on-one -on -one advice on how to make your application stand out. 
Nice, nice. So y'all have a, a quite a pipeline, even from high school, which is really good. That, that's interesting to see. You don't really see that too often at uh, them school. So that's pretty awesome. Um, so after you know you you fit, you you kind of build up your resume and everything, uh, you're ready to reapply. Um, how was, or I guess, how many schools did you actually end up applying to before well, you? So that second, actually, both times I applied to five. Okay. Um, just kind of like, you know, I gave myself like a couple of reach schools, mm -hmm. um, you know, schools that LSU was one of the ones that I, I knew that I had a good shot my second time. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just a, just like a fallback school. Um, but yeah, I think like four or five is probably like good. You know, I've talked to people like just like on my interviews right. who applied to a ton of schools. And mm -hmm. I know that that gets expensive. So, I mean, I don't think you need to go crazy applying to all these different schools, but I mean, I kind of like took it as I'm going to apply to different places that I could see myself living in mm -hmm. just financially. It just made sense to stay here for right now. Yeah, that definitely makes a lot of sense. So how was the the interview process at LSU for you? You kind of walk us through, um, you know, your mindset going in and, and kind of your overall experience for it. Yeah. So I, we showed up early. So I think it starts at seven if I remember. It's like an all day affair. Wow. I remember when I got there, like I was in the parking lot. And like I had a conversation with myself. I was like, look, man, like you're already you're here. They know they know what you're about. Like they want you, you're qualified. You just gotta show up and talk to them. That's all. And like you're in. And so like I think I think just having that mindset of uh like just a confident mindset, that really helped. And uh LSU is like actually one of the only schools I think that still does like a chalk carving at their interview. Oh wow. First thing. So I walked in and they're like, Hey, what's going on? Come this way. And we sat at this like big table and everybody was interviewing. And they hand you a buffalo knife, a piece of chalk, and like a millimeter ruler. And they were just, you have like certain dimensions you have to carve this piece of chalk into. Mm -hmm. I think you get like 30, 40 minutes. But uh, so knock that out, whatever, whatever. Um, and they kind of, they tell you about this beforehand. So like, you know, you know, like how to practice and how to approach it. Okay. But no, other than that, like the interview went well, I think. Like, you know, I had like a uh, real good conversations with, with both the faculty I met with and then they did like the whole little uh you know school tour thing and, right. and kind of showed you what the school was about and how like they're a big family got you got you so after you you know you, you go on the interview you finally get that acceptance letter uh, I'm sure you're happy to to show up on campus as a as a student now how was it for that first year you know transitioning into school uh, how's the curriculum set up and everything yeah for sure um so actually going from that gap year into school, I had I had a pretty difficult time like adjusting for a couple, well, for a few weeks, I'd probably say, just like going from literally chilling, like doing whatever, to actually I had to, I got to show up and I got all these classes, I was studying and all this stuff. <laughs> um, but, you know, I guess if I had to define it in like a few words, it was just kind of busy. But, uh, you know, looking back, actually, like comparing my first year to now second year, I definitely didn't realize how much free time I had at the time. But this year, this year is even more busy. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely manageable for sure. Like I definitely got a hang of things uh like in first year and like I can't I can't really complain, but but at the time I thought I was overwhelmed and whatnot, but it's it's not a thing really. Right, right. So how's the uh how's the curriculum actually set up there? Do you guys have block style? Um is it PBL learning? Is it like an integrated style? Where you guys have tests more often? How how is the curriculum set up? Um, schedule wise. I mean, I, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd define it as like a block schedule. So we kind of have like classes that start and go throughout the year. Okay. Um, like, so so we'll take classes for you know x amount of weeks depending on what class it is, and then we'll have our exams. And so we don't really have like a set you know time where we have all of our exams at once. They kind of just depending on how the classes are going. The exams will just they kind of hit you like whenever gotcha. um, and then like with that they kind of integrated our labs into it too so we're doing a whole bunch of like didactic and lab work like operative we took that first year that was, that and like morphology we were waxing up teeth mm -hmm. so it was like the first actual like dental classes that we were taking um along with you know like anatomy histology um you know all that good stuff and uh and yeah, I mean, even now, like even today, like I just took, I took a final today and I had a final yesterday, but last week we just started three more classes. Okay. So it's kind of, yeah, they kind of like, 
they keep you busy. Let's put it that way. The schedule looks a little hectic when you first look at it. Yeah. But um, once you know how to read it, like it's it's not really that bad. But yeah, they definitely uh they definitely keep us busy. Got you, got you. Okay, so, so for the last few questions, as we start to wrap up here, is uh, um, I know you only have your one dental school experience, you know, be, that being at LSU. But what is something you feel like is unique uh, to your experience in your school? Yeah. Um. So with LSU, actually, the thing that really sold me, like I said, was the like in-state tuition. But like when I after I got my acceptance letter, I kind of I went and talked to the dean of admissions about you know just some things, and one of the things he stressed was like, hey man, look. Like LSU is, is really good about getting our students into clinic early. And, you know, it kind of sold me on that. And, and he was right. At the end of my first year, I had already seen two patients in clinic. Oh, wow. I mean, the first one was um, a patient's exit exam. And then the other one was a profi. But like, it was the fact that we had that experience in clinic and mm -hmm. where, you know, I had that, um, you know, pr patient provider interaction early on to where in second year, when we started up operative clinic in September, and so we see patients every week, you know, it kind of wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal anymore because I had already, I'd already been here. I experienced it and uh, it just got me more comfortable with the environment. I'm like now clinic day, that's, that's my favorite day of the week. Yeah. <laughs> you say you, so you guys have like operative clinic day, like uh, for second year, a particular day while you guys, when you guys are in the clinic. Yeah. Right. So on Fridays we, uh, we started operative clinic D2 year and at the end of September, I believe. And then, so we did that every Friday, like first half of the, uh, the class alphabet wise would go in the mornings and then the second half. So it's only one patient, but okay. so, up. so I was in the afternoon and then we were in like, uh, what is preclinical perio. So I was in operative in the afternoon. I'd be preclinical perio in the morning. And okay. then on, in January, we actually started perio clinic. And so, so on Fridays, I would go to school. I would have my uh, perio patient in the morning, and then I have my operative patient in the afternoon. And so we just spend all day in clinic. Like that's like I said, that's my favorite day. Yeah, <laughs> you you finally get to do you know exactly what you came there for, and it, it feels real. Then you know getting in the clinic. It feels like real, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So last question as we as we wrap up here is uh, if you could go back um now in time and, and tell yourself you know the younger version of you when you were still applying to school still hungry to get that acceptance if you could tell yourself uh any words of advice uh what would that advice be um i'd probably just tell myself you know just keep your head down keep grinding because like i said i didn't get in my first time and you know that was a that was a moment of defeat but but like i knew in the back of my head that you know what i wanted to do where i wanted to go and so I wasn't going to let that stop me. And uh, I, I remember every day, like, I kept telling myself this temporary sacrifice. So when I was studying for the DAT that second time, I, uh, I spent, like, six to eight weeks studying, like, almost six, seven hours a day yeah. just to get, like, what I needed. Because, like, I knew, like, if I, if I could do this now, then, you know, I'll be happy later. And, uh, and, and that paid off. And, like, and something that, like, you know, I hope that helps, you know, even one person you know, become or get into school and then become a good doctor. It's like, you got to realize there's something like that Kobe said, actually, is it's like, you can't, you, uh, you can't stop people from uh, trying to limit your dreams, but you can stop it from becoming your reality. And like, that kind of resonates with me a lot because in high school, actually, when I, when I knew I wanted to go to dental school, made the decision that that's what I was going to do. I had a teacher tell me that she didn't think I was going to get into dental school, let alone, um, you know, graduate from undergrad with a degree in biology. She told me to come up with plan B, wow. plan C and stuff. And I was like, wow, like that's, that's real. But, uh, but like, I didn't, I didn't come up with any backup plans to be honest with you. So like, I'm glad this all, I'm glad I bet on myself and it worked out, you know? Yeah. But uh, yeah, just like put your head down and grind. Cause like whatever you want, yeah, you're going to get it if you work hard enough. Definitely. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Caleb, thanks again, man. Thanks for dropping some gems. A lot of great information uh, about LSU. Uh, definitely, and about your your journey, giving it, giving some great um, advice and motivation to to all the freelancers out there for sure. Yeah, man, no problem. I appreciate you guys reaching out, and I hope, like I said, I hope this helps at least one person. Mm -hmm. For sure, I'm I'm, def I'm sure it will. I'm sure, it's gonna help a bunch of people. If anybody has any questions for you, uh, you know, specifically about your journey or any more questions about LSU, um, you know, I guess could you drop your IG for you know anyone who might want to reach out to you and ask any questions? Yeah, of course. It's just uh, my name, Caleb Murray, uh, okay. on Instagram. Uh, but yeah, like if anybody who sees this has questions about, you know, LSU, dental school, or, you know, like 
anything, like feel free to reach out to me and I'll, uh, I'll do my best to help you out. Definitely. Well, thanks again, Caleb. We'll make sure we put that down in the description. Uh, for everyone else out there, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you know whenever we post up new content. If you have any questions for Tyler or myself, head over to Instagram, follow us at underscore future DDS. Um, send us a DM. We'll get back to you as soon as we can, um, you know, and, and answer any questions that you might have for us. But again, thanks, Caleb. Um, that's going to be it for the interview. Uh, we're going to wrap up here. But be safe out here, man. Thank you. All right, buddy. Thanks, you too.